Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Welcome to the reflection of Unit 7 study guide answer key. If you are viewing this, this means that you have not successfully passed the quiz and therefore we as a topic will go over the answer key together and I'll explain the logic behind it. You should have already finished up all of the pre-work, which one was a map of the three civilizations where you made it. There was the Mayan who were in green, the Aztecs in red, the Olmecs in brown. It's very useful to keep track of those three concepts as it helps create a mental image in your mind while taking the quiz and test. You should have also finished your vocabulary by now finding images that are related to the unit, not just an image of the terms, and of course, citing the images. We also should have been finished by now looking at this assignment about what is a timeline, and they have the AD, BC, BCE, CE, these terms. What do they mean? Why is it nowadays that we have to, or we might see on the internet, when referring to time as BCE, CE instead of BCAD. Um, your thoughts upon that is wonderful to read. You also had to create a timeline of the three civilizations, and by now it should be submitted. Okay, here's where you kind of are at if you have not finished other things. This one was a Google Doc where you had to take and do the assignments below it and helping you fill in the document which is a great was a great note-taking strategy. Outside of that you were to submit it once it was finished. If you haven't done it please it will benefit you tremendously to do your assignments. We then had in each set of the each civilization you had a video to watch and answer questions upon. You had PowerPoints to go through to help you fill in your notes guide. And of course we had a little video and a discussion board. That's for each of the civilizations. To finish the unit up, you had to learn about fact and opinion and be able to recognize the difference between it. Remember, facts are something that can be proven. If a statement makes a provable statement. It is a fact. If it's someone's thoughts or opinions, that means, oh, long hair is beautiful. Well, that might be true. It might be false. It depends upon who you talk to. But if I say O'Leary oh, is in Twin Falls, Idaho, that is provable. It's a fact. And of course, you should have taken the Quizlet practice before you took the quiz where you had to screenshot your final score and submit it. We started off with two different sets to practice on and then I combined both sets into one test. Again, that's a test you should have retaken multiple times until you got the grade you wanted me to submit. Now, this document here... Okay, sorry for the little interruption. Um, Back on to the explanation of what you should be getting done today. One, we are going to go over what you could be able, would have been able to see had you passed your civilization, vocabulary, and location quiz. We also passed out the unit study guide for all people on paper. So I will use the answer key and go over that and explain a few things before you actually take retake the quiz. So here we go. With the ancient civilizations, we focused on three civilizations, <clears throat> and of course, you should have known where they were from. We knew this because one, we read that article that told us where to find it, and two, we relied upon our political map of Unit 6. So, Aztecs. <clears throat> I've actually color coded these as much as I could. Our Aztecs were red on the map, Incans were brown, and the Mayans were in green. 
So anytime we talk about three of the civilizations together, we should refer to them that way. Okay, as I was making this statement, I realized that right below this introduction, number one, number two, I should have the color code thing there as well. So we got our location. Mexico's prime, I mean, Aztecs were primarily located in Mexico. We talked about previously in the unit about how they are called the Mexica. They actually were not, did not refer to themselves as the Aztecs, which is where we kind of got the idea of where Mexico comes from then. Our Incans, we are located in South America. They are the civilization that survived and thrived within the Andes Mountains, located on the west side of South America, and of course, Maya. Maya civilization actually stretched upon many different countries today. However, you could look at primarily they were located in the within the Yucatan Peninsula. Each of these civilizations had a type of farming to help make their life doable. The Aztecs, who built their civilization in the middle of the lake, middle of the lake, they had to do develop arable land, which means land that could be farmed on. How they did it is they developed the chinampas, the floating gardens. Our Incans <clears throat> built terraces. They carved steps into the mountainside, and because of that, it prevented the runoff of the weather, taking the plants and topsoil away. It also allowed for irrigation to be developed. The Incan's irrigation system is amazing. And of course, the Maya, who built their civilization within the middle of the rainforest, a jungle, they had to cut everything down, what's called slash and burn. You cut it down, you burn the crops. Well, that's okay for a little bit, but by cutting it down and burning it, it takes away the nutrients that the plants actually was giving to each other, it also exposes the topsoil to get washed away, things like that. So in reality, it was really bad on the soil, and they had to allow the land to develop naturally again and start the process all over once again. One question here is, why are the Aztecs' home exceptional or unique? Well, one, they built their home on the middle of the lake, on the pond, because of the wise belief system that they followed the signal, they were searching until they found the signal of the eagle perched on top of the casket, cactus holding the serpent, which is actually on the symbol of their flag and many political items even today. So besides building an, and starting a civilization on the middle of an island, they developed causeways. These causeways were like bridges, well that's what they are, that allowed them to go and come from the mainland to the city. The best part of these causeways is if they were being invaded, they could destroy the parts of it and the invaders could not reach the city. Plus, as we just got done talking about in the number two, they had those chinampas which gave them more land to grow on. Um, the main staple, or what was important to survive for each civilization, was, of course, maize, or corn. Now, the Incas did have it as well. However, they also were able to grow over 300 different types of potatoes, which is, to me, absolutely amazing. Because there's not very many potatoes that I knew of the different kinds until studying this unit. However, the main food that allowed for the creation of these civilizations started with the ability to grow, harvest, and maintain the maize throughout the years. Um, so important that there's even the god of corn or maize for these civilizations. All right, the major cities now. Mexico City, <clears throat> sorry, is built upon where the capital city, Tenochtitlan, stood. In fact, 
at this day, you still could go and see, by after they've dug through things and stuff, you can see the actual city stone still. It's buried deep underneath Mexico City, for most part. <clears throat> However, it is still there. A lot of the city of here was destroyed to help make Mexico City or build the new cathedrals and all the stuff by the Spaniards. So that's one reason why some of these buildings and things like that that the Aztecs developed are not around today. Um, <clears throat> how did the Aztecs create the arable land? Well, we talked about this already, but you should have found out by doing your vocabulary that they had to create these little patches of land anchored by trees on a lake bottom, things like that, which today still causes a problem for Mexico City because it's still sinking now that those lake beds, these farmland that later became just regular land as they moved to new locations, well, that city is built on top of it, therefore it's sinking even today which was a very unique feeling walking through these buildings of massive stone and knowing that it's tilted. Um, but that's another story. We, the farmers, of course, had to do their slash and burn. And it ruined the soil, which I already talked about. Number eight on your list should have been the concept of math and what the Mayans people did that was not done prior to this was they had the concept of zero. With the concept of zero, it changed counting system tremendously. All right, so as you can see down here, number nine, if you have not figured it out, the seashell means zero. One dot equals one, two dots are two, three equals three, and four equals four. Once it gets up to four, then it becomes a bar. And then it keeps going again, that you're know, combining the bars and the dots. The interesting thing about the Mayan math is, of course, it does not stop at 19. It continues on to be in a 20, which. Okay. So, as I was trying to say, and I wanted to find some examples to explain it a little bit better. You go up to the 19. To do the next level of value, you have a space on top and a space on bottom. Um, I had a presenter this year that did a great job making a graph where you had your 1s, your 20s, your 400s, and, and a box like that. However, this kind of explains it the same. So once you have a dot above the other grouping of 1s, that means that is this level is multiplied by a 20 and then added whatever the ones were. Here you have the ones, the 20s, and now the 400. So whatever number is up here is multiplied by 400, not by, a, and then this one's by 20, and that one's by added 13. That's how you get the total answer. Now for the test, you simply need to be able to recognize one of these. And the function of the zero would have been to represent 20. You'd have had a one on top, the shell on the bottom, that equaled 20. Uh, it's an interesting information. If you want to check it out more, I've added a few links where you could investigate on your own. Let's continue on with our reviewing of the unit. All right. So, capital cities, well, you labeled the Aztec capital, Tenochtitlan, you labeled the Incan capital, Cusco, but you had to label more than one in the Maya civilization, and those, that meant that, well, one, the Mayans did not have one central location, but they had city-states. That's the difference between these two, where... Incan and Aztec had one central location. The Mayans did not. They had city-states where the power was within the city of the state they're in, but everybody was still under the Maya label. 
You do need to understand what is a civilization and how it's been, how and why is it important for this unit. You also need to understand about the difference between fact and opinion. So, just a sec, I'm going to check and make sure we're recording. Yep, we are. Okay. All right, so back to the lovely place. A fact is something that can be proven. An opinion is someone's belief. Fact. Rosa goes to school with Miss Pagelia. Can you prove this? Yes. You physically see the dog at school. Opinion. Rosa is a smart dog. Is that a fact or is that an opinion? Well, that's very much an opinion because can you measure the smartness of Rosa? Can you determine if she's smarter than your dog? No. So it's what does somebody believe in? Remember when taking the test and you are given the facts and opinions of these ancient civilizations, you think about can somebody prove it? And it's a fact. Is it something that we are strongly believe in, but yet somebody else might find different? That's an opinion. Okay, cenote, sinkhole, beautiful things to look at. However, it's probably not the best things to do if you want to build a home. A sinkhole is where it gets filled up with water. It's beautiful to go diving in. I personally have not had the joy of that, but I have seen a cenote when I went to the Yucatan Peninsula of Chich and visited Chichen Itza. Going on, and it was very, very interesting to see how deep it was. Sad thing to think about is the fact that it was used for sacrifices as well as providing fresh water to people. Um, the civilization, how they keep records. Well, that was easy. Um, the Aztecs and Mayans both developed hieroglyphs. The Incans did not officially have a written language, but they had what was called the quipu. Quipu is the series of knots of strings, and depending upon the location and where they're at, it helped maintain and keep track of the records of the civilization, such as how many crops does one person have or the other, things like that. Thankfully, because they didn't have, they had a runner that had to run between villages. The quipu was the easiest way to transfer information. Um, we talked about this already, but just again, what base is the Mayan and Aztec math? Base 20. So it's interesting, they both had a form of hieroglyphs. They both used the form of base 20 for their math. And if you think about it, you have 10 fingers and 10 toes. There's 20, right? Um... And then, of course, all to the base of five, which I like the idea because you have one, two, three, four, five, and that makes a whole bar. Um, again, I have some links for you to check out if you would like to find out more. This question here is very interesting, as tonight I even watched a Nova special about um, sinkholes developing. Well, the Yucatan Peninsula is filled with many of these sinkholes where surface water does not stay on the surface because it flows through the karst and into and forms these cenotes or sinkholes. Therefore, the surface does not get the water. The water does not stay within the surface. It fills through. That's why people water in yards. It doesn't take more than 15 minutes usually, and after that it's just wasted water. Ah, the three laws. I absolutely love these three laws, and I find that it's very important information. The Incan had three laws. Amasua, do not steal. Amalula, do not lie. And Amakuela, do not be lazy. I think this is a motto all sixth graders should adopt. The Popo Vu. Ah, you're going to have the question here. If you remember in the PowerPoint over the Mayans, there was this one slide about the Popo Vu. Popo Vu is actually a religious text by the Mayans. And again, here's a link to allow you to develop more. 
when we made our timeline, we learned when those peak years were, the years where they were actually thriving, not just the coming upon or disappearing from, but the thriving years. And look at it this way, Maya, they appeared first. Our Inc Aztecs appeared second within our timeline, starting around 1325, and the Incans were the latest within our timeline of information. Yes. Okay. <sighs> Sorry. Okay. So just kind of remember it goes Maya, Aztec, Incan when you're trying to figure out when were their peak years. Finally, vocabulary words. You guys have a lot of vocabulary but you should have been able to find all of the pictures necessary and connect it to the system. Remember the calendar was important for the Aztecs and Mayans. Aqueduct is a waterway. The Aztecs had famous aqueducts as well as the Incans. A causeway was important to the Aztecs. Cenote is a sinkhole. Um, I have it in there twice. Interesting. Okay. Chinampas, which were the floating gardens. Climate, which is important for the idea of where they're at, conquistador. Those were those Spanish people that came and conquered our civilizations. And it didn't matter which of the three civilizations we talked about, and they were all conquered by conquistadors. A fact can be proven, opinion is not, hieroglyphs, the writing, irrigation, Remembered if you did a video or picture of this, it had, cannot be a modern day irrigation system with sprinkler heads and everything, but it should be an irrigation system from that time. Mestizos, we're going to look about that next unit. Monotheism is a belief in one God. A mulatto, we're going to talk about that next unit. Navigable, of course, is the body of water able to, able to navigate. Opinion, what does a person believe? Well, it leads right into polytheism nicely because we monotheistic people have a hard time believing with somebody who's polytheistic. Where do they believe in more than one God? And if, you want, if you're in my room watching this, you know that in the back of the room I have a mural of all the different Aztec gods. Pyramid, well, that was very famous at this time. One thing that's different about the pyramids in Central and Latin America is the fact that they did not have pointy tops like they do in Egypt's. Our pyramids were flat based tops and it was more like steps than actual pyramids. Which probably kind of came back into the idea of a terrace. Um, Kipu, because most of the pyramids by the way were built in to represent the mountains and to get closer to their gods. Pier Kipu, that was the Incan record of keeping where they had knots in, on a cord. Uh, slave, well the Aztecs loved to get slave as tributes. However, the Mayan and the Aztecs, this being a slave also meant you were like first to be in the line for sacrifice if they needed you. Uh, one thing that's interesting about the slave or the pop Aztec civilization with slavery if you are found to break a law, you could be demoted to being a slave. Um, social pyramid. Well, it talks about how to put someone as a slave. You could be related and linked into the noble area, like the Aztecs had their different levels and the Mayans, but yet the Incan social pyramid was just two levels. You had your nobles and emperor and or you had everybody else, the commoners. Again, they could capture and make someone a slave, but in their civilization, the slave could rise out of servitude. But social pyramid is just a, it doesn't matter what civilization you're talking about. They all had a level of it, and depending upon that is how they managed their empire. The terrace, again, important because it allowed to create rainfall, collect it, prevent the erosion of the crops, and created more land 
to Farmal. The terrace in South America are beautiful. It's amazing how they made them. Um, Tierra Caliente. Mm, a lot of you guys seem to miss this one here. Tierra Caliente, hot region. It's the one that you would find going to the ocean, sea level, and up to about 3,000 feet. Think about this. It's, you're on the beach. It's a very hot sand. Or there's hot people out there. Tierra Caliente, hot. You also then would go to Terra Templada. The level above the Caliente is Templada. Templada is the mild climate. Templada is also like a mild hot sauce. Caliente, Templada. Next in line would have been Fria. Fria is cold, like it sounds. However, it is not the highest point of the mountain's peak where you would find your Halada, it's always frozen ice caps, the peaks are there. That is the m most highest elevation zone there is. And finally, tribute. The Aztecs, instead of just conquering a new village, when they did, they left the people there to work for them, and then they took a tax from them that could be in the goods and services. It was not just a one-time tax. It happened frequently and on schedule, basically. In a way, it's kind of like our taxes today. We have to pay tax, or your parents have to pay taxes once a year to our government. That was the same concept of tribute with the Aztecs. All right, that takes care of this study guide. Hopefully by now, with a little bit of explanation, a little bit more, you guys feel that you can now take the quiz, get mastery level on that quiz, and then beyond that, you guys actually can take the test. Hopefully you are filling in your study guide while I was going through this. If not, I suggest you watch it again and do it so that you are ready to jump from the quiz of mastery level and then jump into the test to be done with the unit. Do not forget you have a reflection blog to post about everything you had to do to understand and learn about these civilizations. Thank you and let's get our unit done as we are now in unit 8 and we're going to go through that one extremely fast. For the quiz, knowing their locations physically and politically makes up at least six of the questions here. Knowing the types of farming is also extremely important. Knowing the vocabulary terms. If you've done this Quizlet study guide, you're ready. Okay, that, think that takes care of everything. Good luck and goodbye.